Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got two cool exoplanets, a new look at the Sun from Solar Orbiter, a critical update on the Sun's magnetic field, and a super blast from the past. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find two filament eruptions, right side and on the north incoming, neither aimed at Earth. The big southern coronal hole is revealing its extent, and while it may be too far south to hit the Earth with an enhanced solar wind stream, the co-rotating interaction region, the sun's current sheet, which impacts every few days, impacted stronger than usual last night. Double hump in the yellowish-orange middle panel, that's solar wind plasma density, occurred in the overnight hours for the west, leading to minor geomagnetic storm conditions. The phi angle has only moved slightly, so we may have more coming today. First up in the articles, these are the exoplanets. This one is weird because a Saturn-sized planet has never been seen around such a teeny tiny star before. They actually believed it wouldn't be able to form around these red dwarfs, and so either they were wrong or it was captured. The other cool exoplanet, a massive frigid monster seven times the size of Jupiter. We're approaching failed star status there. But it's frozen, only 26 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 3 Celsius. Giant planets are supposed to be pretty hot, so this is shocking, to say the least. Up next, the solar magnetic field, starting in sunspot minimum and running up to last month. It shows the ongoing solar magnetic reversal, which is the driver of the 11-year sunspot cycle. But what's interesting is that at the end of the sequence, the recent data, it shows we're only halfway done. This would seem to indicate a second peak is likely, which means we may have another year or two of high solar activity in this maximum phase. Oof. We're going to get better information about that in the months ahead. Now that Solar Orbiter is taking inclined orbital paths, its latest is giving us the most detailed look at the south pole of the Sun, various wavelengths, and a special magnetic camera that can help us understand this magnetic reversal activity and solar activity in general. It's going to get more and more inclined up to 2029. Last but not least, excuse me for a moment everyone, no professor, your email about all the papers saying magnetic pole shifts cause extinctions and evolutionary leaps are from the last 20 years. Scientists knew decades earlier, published about it quite a bit, and they knew that when the magnetic field goes nuts like it is right now, species disappear, a lot of them, and some new ones appear. This is my favorite example from the 60s, ma'am. Folks, Pole Shift Conference this weekend, a whole day of everything on the modern pole shift, just how bad it is. Blacksmithing class next weekend, prepper super event two days to close out the month. The rest of the year is really no different either. Conferences and prepper days and special events the rest of the year. After a documentary comes out this fall, tickets to the events are probably going to sell out a lot more quickly. Maybe time to get over to us sooner rather than later. Check out the event list, register, book your stay at observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.